Hello, everybody, and welcome to VU in Focus, where I am joined by Adam Schumacher, and we're going to have a conversation um, as one of the first in a series of events and activations that will be coming your way this year. Um, I'm your host, my name is Hannah G, and I'm from VU Innovations. VU Innovations exists to stimulate entrepreneurship and innovation across the university ecosystem, whether that's students, staff, community or industry. Um, yeah, what more can I say? I reckon it's one of the best jobs actually. Um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the um, lands we're meeting on, that VU is based here in the TV studio, and that's the Boonarong and Woorong of the Kulin. Uh, the traditional, as the traditional custodians of the land in which we're broadcasting you from this morning, I wanted to make the connection to our traditional custodians um, in terms of country, community and culture. We're part of something continuous here and that's a, a, a belief shared by our Indigenous custodians. And as part of that continuous nature of culture as one of the oldest living um, cultures on our planet, I want to invite you to be part of something continuous today, and that's a conversation with our new Vice-Chancellor. Um, so it's in that context that I invite you here, I invite you into the VU community, and we're going to have a really great conversation, I think, Adam. Um, I'm certainly pumped. So, yeah, before we chat about Adam's um, new appointment here as Vice-Chancellor of VU, um, and what it means for your students, um, I want to let you know that you do have the opportunity to ask Adam questions. So whatever box you're watching us on, there's a link or a little form below. Type your questions into, into that form and we'll be spending 15 minutes or so towards the end of this conversation, so in, in around 45 minutes time, answering those questions. Um, if we don't get to them, the future students team will be in touch with um, to help you out or to, to answer those um, questions that we don't quite get to. Um, so that's it from me. I think let's get into the conversation. Um, I'm certainly very excited. I think um, Adam's come in with an amazing energy, huge, huge vision for, for the university, and we just sort of got wind of a few new exciting developments this morning, which I'll leave it to Adam whether he wants to share those or not. Um, so, Adam, you've come to VU from Southern Cross uh, University, and you were Vice-Chancellor there and President from 2016. <laughs> We've got to right. remember all yes. these important <laughs> titles and things like that, which is amazing. Um, but you started your career as an educator in Canada. Yes. So have you got any insights around how, how things differ, um, you know, in Australia compared to, to overseas? Well, look, I mean, I, I've been very fortunate to, to live and work in a number of countries. And of course, growing up in one, I'll call it a Commonwealth, post-colonial country, and now in another, there are things which are pretty similar, but one of the things which is fascinating is the change in which education is perceived by the population. You know, the actual participation in higher education and in vocational has increased dramatically, dramatically. And so when you think about it, even 30 years ago, the rate of people involved in doing degrees was X. Now it's X plus, plus, mm. plus. You know, it's really made a huge difference. So the kind of in, in, you know, involvement of the Bradley Review here, particularly a few years back, just changed the whole landscape in Australia. So participation of people and seeing their careers as directly linked to the opportunities that education provides beyond school is just huge. Yeah. And I think that's what, something that's really noticeable in both countries. New universities have sprung up, new vocational entities, and a really big commitment by governments as well. Yeah, awesome, and it ties yeah. into the lifelong learning yeah, sort does. of nature of, of of learning of education, yeah. which is awesome. Um, so, why VU for you, <laughs> and and why now? Uh, why now, and why this place? Well, look, there's around forty universities in Australia, but very few of them have inaugurated. In fact, I can only think of this place and maybe one other, a completely different curriculum model. Mm. Okay, actually, sat down and said. We think we could do this better. We think that the world needs something different. So, of course, University of Melbourne did this more than 10 years ago in its own way. Very interesting idea. But VU has done it in a way which, with so-called the block, as we know, just changes the way that people view the opportunities. Because let's put it this way. Most people do not think and learn in line with the semester length. Mm. Okay? They learn in bits, in focal points. 
And so the block recognizes that kind of intensive interest in one thing at a time done well, rather than lots of things done at approximately the same time, and then having a lot of assessment in, in the same week, which many people crash and burn over, mm -hmm. frankly, and that's a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. So just the system that we have has been very much favoring that kind of end stopped, uh, high stakes exams. They've gone right out of the picture in lots of places where people are formative and interested in other things. So here, four weeks, class sizes of a period, you know, in a time, sort of 37 people in a class, good group dynamics and focal point on one subject done brilliantly at a time has really worked. I mean, we've got the first graduates here. Why did I come? Largely because of this system. I mean, this is the place that's got it. What a privilege to come at a place which has had the, you know, the bravery, but also the smarts to do it. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, awesome. I think it's, I think it's amazing. Hmm. Um, and I think, you know, I'm really interested to, to learn what we can be doing next from the confidence and from the success of something like mm. the block model, which we, we, we know really well now. Yeah, we do, we do. And, and look, the block isn't everything. Mm. It's also links very strongly to the ethos of the place. And as you know, I think, well, I personally believe, values are really important, not only to society, but in institutions. This place has values. It values every individual and says it's a place of opportunity and success. Mm. And success does mean Frankly, it does mean in part employability. It does mean having your dreams fulfilled in terms of where you want to go. But it also means being on the way there with support in the right way and being challenged, like really at an excellent level. So I'm delighted to be at a place which is leading the way in terms of employability in this nation and also leading the way in the way you get to that end point. So I think both are just great. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, so for our audience, Adam and I are going to be covering probably quite loosely, um, and what I mean by loose, it's going to be a conversation, um, four main topics. So they are in relation to innovation, in relation to space, in relation to dual sector, mm -hmm. and planetary health. Now, because all those topics are huge and, <laughs> and really incredible, we're not going to probably follow them in a, in a super linear format. But yeah. keep an eye out for those themes, that's what we're going to be sort of discussing over the next um, little bit. So, gosh, to kick us off, <laughs> innovation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've just spoken, and I think that's probably a good segue, actually, because mm. we've just spoken about doing things differently and yeah. taking the plunge into the block, and, and sure. you know, and we started small with that, and we iterated, and, and now it's, it's, it's across the university, which, mm. which is amazing. Um, so how are you looking to continue to innovate and enhance the student experience? Well, can I just say it's not me personally, because I didn't do the block myself, I've come because of it, but it's all the academics and all the students yeah. over that period, you know, we're talking about hundreds and now thousands of people, Absolutely. right, who've been in it. So I pay tribute to them, I really do, but also to the school system and that has, you know, created the, the base for this. Like we're talking about schools being part of this mix, don't forget, for example, there's a very good Wyndham Tech School mm. as part of one of our campuses. So in effect, we're not just a dual sector university, it's a triple sector. And I think hmm. one of the innovations we're gonna see is much more reaching down into the secondary sector and pulling out particular elements which can be in the tertiary world and the, the reverse as well. And there's been a couple of reviews, you might have heard of the Firth Review and the Macklin Review that government has engaged in the state of Victoria, both talk about doing things better in that way. Kind of blurring, <coughs> excuse me, blurring the boundaries a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's it existed a bit in the past, but anyone who's involved in careers or advice or leading teachers or principals in this state would know. Students often are wanting to and develop at different times. They mature at different rates. So what this does is actually recognizes the fact that people are prepared and come at different times. Mm -hmm. Some are really in a hurry and others are going more slowly. And the system up to now has generally been a bit, you know, doesn't, uh, doesn't make that possible. Now it does. So put it specifically, if for example, you can take tertiary subjects in high school, many do. If for example, you can take VET or if you like applied subjects in high school, which you can and that's expanding, that's great. But we also need to have something there for all the people who have been, say, didn't finish high school for one reason or another, or have been working for 10 years and then decide, yeah. I've hit a wall. Or indeed, COVID has been the wall. 
You know, many people, look at the number of people who've been thrown into unemployment mm. because of this pandemic, right? Mm. The number of those who have never had employment or education or training beyond high school has increased dramatically over the last year, okay? So we need to be the place that looks at not just 17 and 18 year olds, although that's crucial, but also teachers themselves, retraining, you know? It could be the whole profession comes here to the educational offering that we do in the block and learn something new, mm. okay? Mm. So I think being, if you like, partners with the profession is very important too. That's the first thing. Second thing about innovation is it never stops, okay? So who would have thought, for example, looking ahead to careers, that the most in-demand occupation in the last 12 months would have been contact tracing? Mm. Who invented that? Who thought it was? Now it's essential. And you'll find the same thing with anything to do with vaccination certification now, or the digital nature of that. Suddenly, who can do this best? It's actually a profession. It's actually a job which needs to be done super well, okay? So it seems to me, we, you know, degrees in a way are catching up to the fact that the world is changing so fast. And therefore you need a more nimble system like a block model to be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's my view. Awesome. I love the word nimble. It's yeah. actually my favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think that's really important as, yeah. you know, I mean, who knew, COVID, okay, we needed to be nimble to respond, we need to be listening to the, the, the needs and, and, you know, the humble QR code has had its, has, is having its moment. Yeah, true. Um, but, you know, what you're sort of talking about is, okay, well, well how can we adapt? And I just wanted mm. to pick up on a thread, yeah. you mentioned triple sector. Yeah. Can you yeah. sort of confirm what that Sure. Means. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so it may sound like a technical term, but put simply, and the same thing happens in some other universities in this state too. For example, at, at Monash, there's the John Monash Science School on the main Clayton campus. Okay. I know this because, you know, used to, to work at that university and think it's great as well. But because the Wyndham Tech School mm. is on the Werribee campus and it is focused particularly on AI and robotics and technology and so on, can you imagine how relevant that is to the, the work of the future? So, and it doesn't just teach students in, in one class, mm -hmm. it has visiting students from many different schools coming in. So this is like a demonstrator school, not just a set school. Mm -hmm. So while schools differ, there's public schools, independent schools, Catholic schools, they all, I believe, have one thing in common, which is considering and anticipating the future and preparing people for it. That's the key, yeah? Absolutely. So the more we do that, I would like to see another example of that on one of our, our other campuses and also a view that this matters. As I said, it's like from A to Z, a continuum of learning. And it goes beyond one degree because often people have to add to it. The other part is this. If you talk about skills, everyone's mentioning skills with a capital S, right? So I'll give you an example of what I mean. We have some of the best nursing graduates in the state. You know, it's clearly the case that hospitals say they're fabulous in the wards. They're, you know, innovative themselves, to use that word. They know all the patient care. The one thing that's changing super fast and perhaps we don't do enough of for all of our healthcare graduates is the digital enablement of mm. that. It's coming and it's getting better, but myhealth.gov.au, or again, when I mentioned all the, the COVID related, you know, identity stuff, you know, that's what we also need to train and be part of. So it's almost like the best skill in the world is here. This is A, B is the best degree in the world. And if you put them together, you have the best career outcome. Okay, long term. So we want this A plus B equals C. That's the model, mm -hmm. right? And if you have a dual sector, I'll go back to that, that is the polytechnic, mm -hmm. which all those skills are focused on. For example, cybersecurity or technology or any number of skills, you have the degree. It could be law, it could be business, it could be sociology, whatever it is, or health, together concurrently make C. That's the key. Mm. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> all right. Where do we go from here? I know where we're going to go. Space. Yep. Because you've mentioned um, the tech school. Yep. Uh, you've mentioned sort of nursing and, you know, over the road from us here, we've got the ho new hospital going up, yes. which, which is in incredible. And then, of course, City West Campus. Like, there's some Correct. pretty exciting things happening as it relates to space. And, and that's kind of physical space, but then we've also got digital space and... Yep. Well, maybe outer space, who knows? <laughs> right. I don't know, we'll see where we go, right? Depends what we're, what we're studying. Depends what we're yeah, studying, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, 
I guess, you know, how is VU yeah. championing that, that change okay. as it relates to space and place Good on you. Um, in terms of how we're learning? No, it's a great question. And I, I've got to pay tribute to the, my predecessor, Peter Dawkins, who was one of the great precinct thinkers, you know, yeah. and also the council for getting right way ahead of this. The government itself in Victoria has identified, you know, learning precincts, sort of educational precincts and industry precincts coming together as being a massive thing for the future. You know, you just can't rely just on one spot. Okay, so here, if you imagine Footscray, call it a precinct, okay, a health precinct, the biggest hospital in this part of the state, $1.5 billion being cre created, the hoardings have gone up, and a bridge across the road in the future between the two for research, for sampling, for people to move back and forth, and then that will itself create a kind of constellation of things. Imagine what a health precinct brings to it when you already have the number, number nine ranked sports university in the world on this campus. So that's also to do with health. So imagine someone who has a hip replacement in a hospital, has to recover, and all the facilities for recovery and rehabilitation are just literally footsteps away, okay? The, everything that you could imagine. That's a precinct in action, okay? So it's in the service of the public, but it also creates employment, and it also does it in a dual sector way. So I would think we will see different programs coming here, which are part of both, and that road across will be crossed, you know, frequently. And you mentioned the city. Well, everyone's talking about towers, aren't they? You know, what will happen in the CBDs of cities and will people go back to high rise, you know, to work again? Look, I think it'll be different, but a CBD is still a powerful thing, right? So we have a 26 story building that'll be finished at the end of this year. And we're talking about flipping a bit of the model there. And instead of just having our own, as it were, operations, what we teach, we learn and we research in it, we want to invite in some key partners into the building. So the VU Law School and the School of Business are both in the city and they're you know, headquartered strongly. Why not a law firm in the building, you know, cheek by jowl with our academics and our students so that partners in the law firm could become adjuncts in the university, okay? Therefore, at the same time, people attend seminars that the law school puts on and that the profession does. So there could be a kind of boardroom of the future you know, shared by both, and even better, the students can get opportunities for internships in the same place mm. and space, to use both words you said, mm. rather than having to search out there anywhere else in the state. So, of course, we can't have everyone do it all the time, but that's an example. Mm. And you could do the same thing in, say, ethical finance with a firm, and that would be signaling where our school of business might be going that's related very strongly, again, to the future of, of the world of work. Mm. So that's the model. It's kind of flipping it to, so insource what's there into the same edifice, mm. rather than saying, go find your way in the world outside. Because finding your way in the world outside is a hard thing. Sure is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm still finding it. I don't know. No. Um, what, what I love about both of those examples, yeah. like I can, I can, see it so clear like I can visualize like this this collaborative kind of community campus yeah. oh my gosh that was quite clever alliteration wasn't it um we might use that we might use that yeah. should we use that um because I can you know like crossing the road is like whatever but if we've got this this sort of connection yeah. and we're we're working and we're studying and there's a community sort of precinct around it um I love the link to sport and health because I think yeah. you know that's having been involved with the hospital as well, like just mm. seeing the incredible work that's happening, um, you know, in our health and sport yeah. space and then the building and in the community, like I can I can just see the kind of uplift to the yeah. to the precinct. Hey Hannah, could I just ask you one thing though, if it's all right. Yeah, There's, it's already happened too. Yeah, you see, cool. no, we're not we're not saying it's just in the future. So if you take the VU Witten Oval, Mm. Okay, that is a wonderful headquarters for some of the best sporting teams, the women's team, the men's team, you know, all the different leagues that play there. But it's also, we have net right now, as I speak, PhD students doing sports science on that site. Yeah. You know, we have lots of players playing for both the professional teams studying with us. So what I'm saying, this integrated model, this kind of community, and talk about community participation. Have you ever been to a game and seen 10,000 people who are part of the community celebrating the fact that it's all together in one space. So what I'm saying is I've just noticed that this is the VU model. We're just, mm. if you like, replicating that partnership model and taking it further. 
Yeah. But it ha it's already in place. In yeah, great call. Yeah. Yeah, couldn't agree more, actually. That's awesome. Um, I'm really excited about this boardroom of the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is a boardroom of the future? <laughs> okay. Well, look, I hazard a guess, but look, those of you who are in education would know everyone has meeting rooms, whether it's staff rooms or this kind of thing. And to some extent they work, but COVID has told us that space you've got to be really careful with. Yeah. And you've got to also be a bit hybrid about whether you're here, there, or in, in person. So this is the idea of the boardroom. If you imagine the Adelaide Writers Week that's just been held, mm. and some of the authors who are presenting from overseas, of course, couldn't travel here because of borders being shut, but they very cleverly, with the theater design people as well as technology, made screens virtually sitting on chairs like these for people who are absent, okay? But they were such high definition and so good, you know, people could almost gesture towards the screen as if it was there and the, pe the person was there, it was really engaging. So I, my idea is simply that we could do similar things in a boardroom for those who can't travel interstate or, you know, it's just not possible, or guests from another country and avoid some of the unnecessary travel or the stress of it, but it also makes it possible to create a backdrop. Mm. So if you're, if you're, if you're having a, a moot court and you've got a number of screens in this room, you don't have to have a physical wooden structure called a moot court. You could actually have, you know, moot court visual behind you and on that day, that's what it is. But that could also be the high court if you're teaching constitutional law in that, in that same room. So it's just, to me, using technology and in person, like we're doing here today, mm. you know, we've got the cameras, everything else happening, we're recording, it's, it's streaming, and we're in person. Mm. That's the model. So basically, it's quite simple, but it's a matter of design. Yeah. And designing it properly is the key. Yeah, and so that we can integrate that education and real world experience, yep. and it's not a different place you go Correct. to. And don't forget that the design of such things and also the operation of such things and even the future considerations of such things are all occupations. They're all occupations. Mm. So those, yeah. kind of, yeah. those kind of things, if you look at uh, you know, way, the way television now works as well and take a you know, show like The Project or something like that, you know, 13 second grabs on news, that's a particular skill of editing and a particular skill, you know, everyone has a different view of what the stream is. Okay, it's all happening, but I believe we should be the, you know, one of the leading places in this country for designing those jobs of the future. Mm, awesome. Yeah. Hey, so let's go back to um, the U Polytechnic. Yep. Um, and I guess the, the sort of dual, dual sector sort of status stuff we do. I don't know, well, that was a terrible sentence. Um, but I guess, you know, we, we're talking about the U Poly is not just a pathway, um, but a complement to, to, to higher ed and, yeah. and vice versa. Mm. Um, so can you give us an example sure. of how that could actually look? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll try because one of the things that struck me, because I, I love the fact that it's, you know, dual sector and the Polytechnic has, if you think about it, 11,000 students passing through the doors daily. 18,000 enrollments and the university has slightly more. So that we're talking about massively, you know, big operations. But take, for example, two things. There's a, in Sunshine Campus, which I was visiting yesterday, the Skills Hub, which is there, is part of the Polytechnic. But again, it's about AI, robotics, integrated learning, you know, using things differently. And it links very strongly to things like cybersecurity yeah. at the St. Albans Campus, both under the wing of the Polytechnic. Okay, so when I, before I came, I actually talked with the CEO of Arnet. For those who don't know, it's the Australian Academic Research Network that empowers all of our research and you know high 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 def computing and everything else. And I said, look, where is really good work being done in cybersecurity? And they said, have a look at Saint, the St Albans campus, which you're going to, and it'll be part of the university's embrace. Yes, indeed, it's there in partnership with Cisco, and students have a, you know a, a shorter program, maybe up to 12 months in one of the areas which is the most in demand and needed in the country, yeah. it's actually in the polytechnic wing of the university. And there are, I think, something like 800 students in a kind of waiting room, digital waiting room, waiting to do it, you know, because it's so popular. So what I'm saying is we often think that it's only the university that in innovates, both do, mm. okay? So if you need a shorter diploma and that kind of thing, it's ideally done there. It can link very strongly to what's done in the university as well in our great IT faculty. We've had, we have one of our wonderful IT colleagues who's, you know, on the College of Experts in the ARC, the Research Council. So what I'm saying is that field is a great strength if you take the total picture. So imagine this, someone who is doing any degree, say in business 
or any degree in arts or any degree in science and wants to have a diploma in cybersecurity on top of that can do so at the same time mm. as doing their degree. Imagine the difference in the world of work if you're able to present and say, I've got this fabulous science or engineering degree and a cybersecurity qualification. I can tell you right now, it's a, it's a, it sets you apart. Mm. And that's what we want. We want to set every graduate apart. That's what it's about. Fabulous. Love it. So would you say that's one of the ways we're going to see VU as the top dual sector <laughs> university? Well, look, you, you, <laughs> we have aspirations, right? You have to have big goals. So I've said I want to see this. I'd love to see this. It, I'd adore to see this uh, being the best dual sector university in the world. Now, there's some pretty good ones. So, mm. you know, it's a bit of competition. But what I mean, doing it in this way, doing it in what we might call it the VU way, mm. which is both you know, quality, but focusing on accessible, accessible excellence, but also the outcomes. You know, we want to be the place that graduates the best students in the world in these areas and sees them thrive, even if they have to slow down or speed up during the course of that degree. Mm. And so just to get back to the block, don't forget that if you're doing one thing at a time for four to five weeks, you can turn on a study period or turn off if your work ramps up or down or if your life ramps up or down, it's much more flexible. Okay? And what I think the world needs so much of now, because so many jobs now have been made part-time, is more flexibility that doesn't say, you've got to give up your job to study. That's just something we don't want to ever mm -hmm. say. And similarly with our online offerings. You know, the postgraduate VU online offerings now, you know, rating really, really well, are doing the same thing. So if you want to speed up, you can. If you want to slow down, that's fine too. If you want to accelerate, that's fine. But the choice is yours, not ours. Mm. And I think in the past it's been fit our model, fit our timetable or else. What we're saying is come here and we'll make this work for you to the extent that it is possible. I love that the choice is yours, not ours. Yeah. You can see I'm trying to pick up on these like little billboards. It's like <laughs> the choice is yours, not ours. We're not going to do the push-ups for you, but we'll make it as easy as possible for you to, <laughs> to, to take on a short course <laughs> and, and make the most of it because yeah. you've got time or, or yeah. you can fit that in alongside other things. Like, yeah, yeah the, the choice is yours, not ours. Well, I'll give you another analogy from sports since you've opened that door. I mean, think of high impact training. Yeah. You know, that's just as useful. And many people say it's better than, you know, just doing the long, slow walks, right? I love, love walks, by the way, but I'm saying if you do both and you have the choice, that gives you that arsenal of doing things mm. better. Mm. Yeah, and it just offers more opportunity for, for students. Yeah, it does do. Um. And frankly, think about this, it makes it possible to have things at different times of the day too. Yeah. You know, it's like an evening slot that fits your life or, you know, and online, you know, view online, some of the most popular sessions are on the weekends, you know, when people have the time to do the work. So. What I'm saying is I don't think we can go there with a predetermined notion that university is only this day of the week or that time of the day. Mm. It's when people are ready to study, we're there for you. When you're ready to excel, we're ready as well to help you. And when you're ready to graduate, we hope it will be in person sometime yeah. soon, it's also the same. Yeah. So I guess the other thing is this provides opportunity for school leavers, but mm. also teachers as well. Sure. In, um, yeah. Well, just think of it too. I mean, uh, the number of assistant principals in schools in this state, you know, there are hundreds, okay? And so one of the things we've been looking at is we have an MBA, which is very popular, but the idea of having educational subjects in it, like an educational MBA hybrid, is something we're looking at at the moment. And different hybrid forms of MBAs online for a second degree for people who want to advance in their career, mid-career, okay? So what I'd say to people who are in the profession this isn't just about students, it's about you, mm -hmm. you know? It's about the world of work and everybody is facing different junction points. We all reinvent. Every time I start a new job like this one, I'm so lucky, you reinvent something. You learn something. And I'm learning every day here. It's kind of like I'm studying the block, you know? Yeah, yeah. And eventually when I've studied enough, I might be able to teach it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what will you teach? Uh, well, if I'm, a, you know, if I'm invited to, and I'd love to be invited to, I'd love to do something in comparative indigenous literature you know, just comparing, for example, in Canada, New Zealand, you know, South America and here, just have to fit it into a four week thing. It can't be too big, but I'd love to do it. But we've got yeah. the block for us. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if anyone's going to do it, I think it's VU and, yeah. and you, which is amazing. So actually, talking about, um, I guess that's a little bit of a segue into planetary health. Yep. Well, 
in my mind it is. Yes. <laughs> it might not be clear to everyone, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sort of thinking about, you know, our, our indigenous sort of culture and, and custodians of our land and what we can sort of learn and we've got this terminology, planetary health. Mm -hmm. um, how, I guess, is VU, um, you know, contributing yep. to, to our planet? Okay, well, can the you imagine? The health of our planet. <laughs> this is the year when the health of every citizen on the planet, in that sense, have been looked at and considered more than ever before. And you can just imagine if it's planetary health in Brazil, imagine how you feel right now mm. if you're studying in that country, you know, just to pick one example, mm. okay? Yeah. So, you know, my heart goes out to many, many people in that regard. But what I'm saying too is that planetary health isn't just a thing, it's a necessity, okay? Everyone has seen that getting better from COVID is a necessity. It's a wake-up call, right? Not just for that pandemic, but for other things. So what we're trying to do is integrate that approach, that approach to what's called place-based planetary health. In other words, in you know, the city of Melbourne or the state of Victoria or the country of Australia, you know, what specific things are. And therefore, it does link really strongly to the knowledge that we listen to and must listen to from Indigenous elders. I don't think it's just up to us. Mm. And it would be a big mistake if it was. So the only criticism I have of the term planetary health is it's, you know, in English language and invented mm. by other people. Mm. But really, the concept is great. And I would call it, you know, we called it actually in a prior place where I worked, call it caring for country. Mm because that was much more the indigenous concept, you know, of what we have to do. Mm. In, the, in the end result, it's changing the way you behave in concert with the, with the planet. But, you know, just to the extent that we're a big organization in a big part of the city and a big part of the state, we could absolutely improve. And the question I would ask is, in every discipline, in every area, what are we doing that's different to recognize that? Mm. And I think, you know, that's being led strongly by my colleagues, strongly by Corinne Reed as the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Provost. It's a fabulous thing. The council said we want to do this in stages and to make them measurable, tangible and real. So I think there's not any degree where this couldn't be touched and not any degree where it couldn't be done better. That's our view. Cool. And I think that that links it back with, I know, you know, the work Corinne is, is leading and, and everybody's involved in like the... Yeah the commitment from Victoria University in terms of the health of our planet, yep. planetary health, you know, um, what, what was the terminology you just oh, used? Oh, caring, caring for country. Caring for yeah, country yeah, yeah. in the world, I guess, yeah. um, you know, is something that's, that's very genuine and, and very strong. So how does that come back to the student experience? Yeah, yeah. it's got to be really anchored, okay? Yeah. Because I think the concept is great to sign up to. And in a sense, any university could sign up to the concept. It's what you do with it. So this is a year, this is a three year period I call doing time. Hmm, cool. Doing time. There's a really uh, a Latin word triennium, you know, for the three year period. Yep. So it's kind of like a doing triennium, if I could put it that way. And so, <laughs> so we have to think about, you know, for every degree, and I'll, I'll just take law because we mentioned it earlier, cool. you know, environmental law, what are the aspects that are changing now because of what we're seeing? You know, what are the, the laws of personhood, you know, crossing borders, you know, because of health and so on. And so even though planetary health might be thought of as solely about the environment, it's also about people in it, okay, how we behave differently. So just think of all the health disciplines, how we're also talking about, you know, you know, avoiding these things in the future too. Engineering is a good example. Okay, so we have fabulous researchers in engineering looking at what might be described as green concrete. You know, so when you're doing the big build in Victoria, okay, how does that not impact as much on the environment when you're doing the big build? Mm. That's a kind of big deal too. Huge. And so that's one of the things which we're really proud to see happen. So you can't just sign up to development and growth and construction without saying, can we do it better? It's really practical. You know, so, you know, engineering is a good example. IT is a good example. You know, IT itself can be either done in a very green way or in a very energy um, guzzling way, if I put it that way. And so, you know, have to make choices about how you do it. What's your energy supply for the university as well? Procurement, for example. Mm. So it isn't just one thing. It's in research, it's in operations. And what students will see, I think, is not in any sense saying you must do this. It's giving options to choose from, mm. you know, and take a lead. Very often it's students who take the lead. They're Absolutely. going to be doing this. It's, it's a student thing, not just us. Yeah. And so how, how does this, um, how does, you know, what impact will this have on VU's community? Um, mm. And I guess that, that sense of community. Yeah, I'd like to think it, it, we do it with community, you know, because like otherwise it won't succeed. So, for example, yes, I had the, the privilege of visiting two of the, the local city councils. And, you know, when you're talking about this, and of course, we have a very close relationship with 
pretty much all of them in this whole region. Yeah. But they want this too. They're talking about if you cluster, remember we talked about precincts? If you cluster a precinct together, hospital, city council, education, jobs together, independently of that, people don't have to travel as far. In, independently, you're, you're lessening your carbon footprint in a city if you have you know, a precinct in Sunshine, mm. a precinct in Werribee, for example, right? These are the kinds of things of the future where seriously, same thing in Western Sydney, have a look. Have a look at you know, Parramatta, Liverpool as you know, not the CBD, but alternative CBDs. Yeah. And have a look at airports as places which you don't have to leave necessarily to stay. You know? So what I'm saying is it's a very practical thing. And, and in the past, we've just assumed you just have to go a long way. And you know, this idea of commuting, you know, yeah. always, always, always. Many people are saying, do we really have to continue to do this in the same way? You know, it also implies you know, changing more towards you know, alternative forms of transport and so on. But getting rid of the need is part of it. Mm. I've become a lot more ruthless um, with meeting times now yes. and like Zoom. It's yes. kind of like, can we just do it on Zoom? Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's still face to face. Yep. In fact, it's probably a lot more, you know, there's less fluffing around. But I must admit, I've gotten quite ruthless. I'm like, if I don't have to get in a car and, yep. and you know, waste that time and energy, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's kind of Good of both. a bit brutal. But, um, yeah. you know, I think it just puts it in perspective what's important. Yeah. Did you want to talk a little bit more about VU Online? Yeah, sure, sure. Look, I mean, not everyone would know what that is. So I just mm. be, uh, we have a subsidiary that we created and we do it with a fabulous partner called KeyPath, which essentially is the best of what we do in the postgraduate space made available. You know, so for example, the Master of Business Administration has been incredibly popular in that regard. We're going to um, turbocharge that because we think, again, we've, you know, done the numbers and see that many people well, about a third of the students already are from other than in the state of Victoria. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a national footprint, international footprint question. And to me, the universities which then can put their very best offerings online, so irrespective of time difference, for example, yeah. in other parts of Australia or indeed other parts of Southeast Asia, we're going to get to a stage where that is being done. Mm. Okay. So I think the design there, the delivery there is super superlatively good, but it's not the same as the undergraduate block. It's a bit longer, like they're six week blocks, not mm. four, because often postgrad takes a little more in depth time. But it's, that's the kind of thing we're talking about is you know, rapidly advancing that suite. Yeah, awesome. Um, did you want to share with us any of the outcomes from council on Oh, Monday? right. Yes, well, I, I mean, you, before you, the minutes are published. Yeah, but before right. the minutes <laughs> are published, but what yeah, can yeah. you share? Because I yeah. think, you know, what, what the audience won't pick up is the bounding energy that Adam came in with this morning. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so inspired by, yeah. you know, your colleagues on council and, sure. and you know, here, here we are with this yeah. amazing kind of newly endorsed focus, if you like, yeah. if I can call it that. Well, look, put it this way. I, I mean, we're, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing with council, but the, the council, of course, we've got a fabulous uh, new chancellor, Steve Brax, and, you know, we're all learning from and admiring the fact that he's in that role. But we also have the fabulous chancellors from last year on the council, uh, Gay Hamilton and uh, Wayne Kaler Thompson. So we've got this kind of triumvirate of experience, you know, leading the way in governance terms, which is great. But also the council said for this year, Yep, and academic board, both mm. last year or last week and this week, said we're seven key themes for this year. You've covered um, approximately uh, half of them already. You know, doing dual differently, for example, is one of the key ones. Turbocharging VU online, you know, and uh, you know, amplifying, amplifying the west of the of the city. All these kind of things, you know. Uh, yes, they said those are the things we want to do. Let's do them really well and measure it. Show the outcome. Yeah. Show it for schools, for example. You know, and we have this great system called AVID, you know, which is part of about 70 schools in the West. I'd love to just work more with that group and have more schools like that. So I think the offer is there. If you want to partner with Victoria University and you're in a school, this is the place to come. And if you want your students to partner with us, this is the place to come. So it's, that's really what council is saying is let's do more in the backyard and in the front yard and in the world. And research, of course, is in there, too. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can't forget research. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I think we might move to Q&A, mm. actually. Okay. Yep. Um, because we've got a few things coming through. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm just going to gather my thoughts a little bit. Oh, here we go. Hmm. Um, so Melanie has asked, yeah. um, so we've had International Women's Day yeah. um, this week. So what are your thoughts on preparing female students for the future? Wow, gosh, Melanie, uh, I, I, that's a wonderful and important and timely mm. question. Look, personally, I, I've got to say this International Women's Day is one of the most heartfelt and poignant that I can remember, and for very good reasons. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do, and we've got to be a place that isn't just uh, safe and supportive, but also one which it extends the opportunities for female students or for you know students from different genders as well, but we're talking about women at the minute. And I think there should be no discipline which is seen as being male dominated, you know? So if it means that we might have, for example, at some point, an intake specifically for women into engineering, we would look at it, you know? Like, I just think there's things like that that we can absolutely do in concert with schools and design it. But it's also the case that we just absolutely, you know, say our 100% commitment against any violence or discrimination towards women. I mean, just such a time and place at this moment in our society, you just have to stand up and be counted on those issues, and we will be. Mm. Amazing. Um, so, Adam, you are one of Australia's leading research in the area of Indigenous literature and culture. So how's your experience going to contribute um, in your new role, or in your role at, at, at VU? Well, look, I, all I can say is that I'm still learning a lot about this part of the country, because every time you come to a new part of the country, you sit and uh, listen. And I was incredibly humbled to be welcomed here. Uh, you know, Karen Jackson and other members of Mandani Balak, thank you. Mm. And we had a smoking ceremony on my very first day just to sit, listen, and hear, you know, what's here. And I think we're going to be working a lot more on not just Indigenous knowledge together, but its application, its actual application. So, for example, we have some very important research being done in Brimbank, which is externally funded philanthropically. And it's about building advantage, mm. building advantage, not disadvantage being remediated, hmm. building advantage, okay? And so if you listen, I believe, carefully to Indigenous colleagues, it's all about different ways of improving the world, you know, and analyzing it too. So, you know, whether it's politics, whether it's history, whatever it may be. So here, for example, there's an archive, Indigenous archive, that's based on Gary Foley's work. And, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, Gary and others were some of the pioneers of the whole Indigenous movement in this country. Proudly, that's here. Yeah. So we want to make that accessible. Absolutely. So that's not just accessible online and digitized. It's accessible to people who can say, this is the part of the history of where we've come from and where we must go. You know, there's long, still a long journey to go. But to answer your question, I'm here to listen to that and to help in any way I can. But also that will inf inform and, and, and affect the way we hire, the way we teach, the way we learn, and the way we, in which we welcome Indigenous students themselves to say this is the place which feels like the most welcoming in the country. Mm. That's our aim. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. When I found out about the archive, the Foley archive, I was like, what? That, yeah. How do we, the, it, it blew my mind. And you know, that, I know it sounds ridiculous. I, I, I'm here, I work yeah. here. Yeah. Um, but just uncovering the wisdom and, and listening and learning, I'm like, wow, imagine this. Just being more accessible to your, to your point yeah. and, and having us connect. Kind of with that. Well, and just think too, some of the great uh, collections that exist in Australia for Indigenous knowledge at uh, in Canberra, there's at least a couple, you know, this could be seen as, you know, one of those, right, nationally, internationally. So yeah. can you imagine, you know, scholarships for Indigenous uh, PhD students from other nations coming here, for example? That's the possibility for the future, that kind of interconnection, which is both local and working together. Think of, you know, the World Council of Indigenous Peoples, you know, there's more than 30 countries who are members. Every students from every one of those countries could be welcomed here. You know, it's that kind of thing. Like, be ambitious. So it isn't just about the block, it's also about this too, and then studying in that way. Mm, yeah, awesome. Um, we've got another question that's come through from Yassine, and mm -hmm. he's asked, or Yassine, sorry, has asked, I'm not, not sure, um, what's the plan currently for transitioning our commencing and continuing students back on campus? Ah, that's a great question, look. <laughs> Huge yeah. question. And, and you know, <laughs> this is in the hands in part of government to do with the vaccination rollout. And I'll just say a word about that. 
Uh, we have written to government, both Minister for Health and Education and also the Treasurer, saying if we as a university can do anything to accelerate the vaccine rollout in our region of Melbourne, whether it's infrastructure or people or volunteers or refrigeration or whatever, we have put up our hands and said we'll do it. Because what we are seeing is a little bit of, um, you know, kind of lack of certainty about how that's going to happen and when it's starting to maybe drift a bit on the timeline. But we think the sooner that happens, the sooner it occurs, everyone will then be able to say it's safe to be fully on campus, it's safe to be fully back at work, it's safe to be, you know, start opening borders as well to international researchers, students and so on. So we are transitioning back already and the Polytechnic has led the way. We've never shut, mm -hmm. by the way. Even throughout COVID, it was never shut. You know, many operations, the university was operating, uh, you know, almost 100%. It just, you know, a lot, a lot of it pivoted to online. But, you know, the security staff was still here. The operations staff was still, were still here. And, you know, the public facilities have been open largely throughout with, you know, the gyms and pools whenever they could. Mm. So it's just more having everyone back. So I would say at this point, it's looking like June will be the, the, the point at which, you know, things will be, as it were, we hope, back to, well, relatively normal mm -hmm. but again that's also just subject to what might happen you know no one picked a five-day you know rapid lockdown in february either so you know we just have to be nimble as you said before and if something does happen we'll deal with it but our aim is to help with that vaccine rollout mm, awesome how, how are we helping with that rollout oh well look if you think about it this way and again the dean of health has been incredibly helpful mm -hmm. too we've said to well western health the hospital system would you like our assistance in volunteering, you know, with say students who are doing health to come and absolutely help the workforce in administering vaccines? Or even kind of a very adventurous notion we had with the Western Bulldogs together with them was to make uh, an operation at the, at the Witten Oval available, one of the buildings there, let's say in bad weather, you know, and you want to have max vac mass vaccinations. So if you look at other countries, they've been using cathedrals, they've been using sports stadia, to do vaccine rollout, but not in this country. So we're saying, if you really want to ramp it up and consider that, we're here to do it with you. That's the kind of yeah, thing we're talking awesome. about. Yeah, awesome. That's so amazing. Um, so another question's come through um, from Vinyaga. Um, what do we mean when we talk about precincts and how are they uh, impacted or enhanced by online spaces? Uh, <laughs> there's a double-sided double, double -sided <laughs> yeah. question there. So weirdly, I'm going to just put, put out something. Thanks for the question. Look, a precinct, it's, a, it's a, in a sense a fancy word for a collectivity of interest, right? Where people come together. So if you think of a hub, you know, that's another word that's often used. Mm. So if you think public transport is often a key, like having a node for public transport, very good place to start. And then you think that a health facility is an excellent place to start because you can take public transport to get there. And then you think a school or edu you know, educational facility as also part of it. And then attendant businesses that support all of those could be pharmacies, could be a private hospital, could be any number of things. Then you cluster together a lot of community of interest, right? And it's not like a shopping center, much as though they have their role, because it's not just to buy, it's, it's, it's professional services, okay? So the precincts therefore mean that if you had to, for example, attend a physician and also go to the pharmacy, and you also had to get a, you know, a rehabilitation program. You could do all those things within the same 500 meter square space, something like that, really convenient. Instead of going here for one thing, mm -hmm. there for another, and there for a third, can you imagine just even getting there? It also means less reliance on parking because of the public transport, more availability to sort of cycling and e-bikes and all that kind of stuff, like you know the whole design, right? Now, where does online come in? Well, think about it. Click and collect. What is that? It's online plus. Okay. So what's the equivalent of click and collect in educational terms? You might say what? Well, we have click and collect services for the library, for example. You know, or you have click and collect in terms of you know various things that might be in terms of assessment, right? So it's it's hybrid. Okay. It's not online versus in person. Yeah. It's both. And that's the way of the world. That's what's going to be happening. When we are traveling in the future, I guarantee you this, you, you know, you'll be presenting some sort of certificate, which is like an online certificate. You mentioned QR codes. It might be something like that. <laughs> but you'll be sitting there. We'll be sitting there if you want to get on a plane and show us your certificate will not be just a written thing. Mm. It won't be like a, an actual physical passport. It'll be something on your phone. Okay. So again, digital in person. That's the future, yeah, I think. Yeah, the blend. The blend. Love yeah. it. Um, so Jill's asked, um, what is at the St Albans campus is 
is it the polytechnic space? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. So, so if people hadn't haven't been to St Albans, have a look. There's an award-winning design building, which is in partnership with the leading international uh, digital company Cisco. So they provide a lot of the equipment. It's a facility of the Polytechnic of this university, and it's a, a standalone facility for they call it a red team, blue team approach to teaching mm. cybersecurity. Okay. Now we think that's a fantastic model and it's been rated one of the top 10 in the country as far as its practicing work. I think there's also a potential for like a digital version of that, like an online version. <clears throat> that could be studied wherever, but with you know, particular ev events to really focus you know, the cyber knowledge in a place like St. Albans. So it's both full service and potentially hybrid. But yes, it's on the St. Albans campus. You might've seen it because it was also a COVID testing site, you know, yeah. to, to yeah. you know, be aware. And it's also a sporting, facility and we're talking about potentially more in the professional sporting uh, future there which might occur as well so it's uh, you know sport as I said before sport wellness that whole arena mm. to use that phrase is a big part of this university and in many of our campuses so we have partnerships with you know you know both two of the, the leading professional soccer clubs in the state certainly the Western Bulldogs and many of the, the women's teams and looking forward to the Women's World Cup as it's going to be very mm. soon in both Australia and New Zealand yeah amazing yeah. Um, and actually, I believe there is a, because this is one of a series of events as part of yeah. VU in Focus, so I believe mm. that the St Albans campus is part of that. Oh, okay. Like there's an experience yep. there right. um, that's part of this series. So I, I guess um, we can find out. Can I just say a bit about Sunshine more. too, though? Because Please. I don't want to just, <clears throat> you really should have a look at the Sunshine Skills yeah. Hub, <clears throat> because that's been something which was endowed by philanthropy, again in the Polytechnic. It is right up there as being one of the most leading edge places I've seen for the integration that we said before, the face-to-face -face and online hybrid. So holding a meeting with all the best facilities around, doing 3D printing right in that example of solutions while your meeting is on, all that kind of thing. And it's got some facilities, you know, robotically that I haven't seen before. And that's sitting right in sunshine, walking distance from the train station. Mm. So, you know, that's what we're talking about precincts. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we've got a, a question from Bill. Um, how does the quality and the type of teaching and learning relate to the block model, to collaborations with hospitals, law firms, and engagement with students with multiple experiences, ages, and goals? Wow. <coughs> well, so there's a lifelong <laughs> question yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just about school leavers. Okay, so I'll try and pick it apart a bit. So if we're talking about this kind of flipped campus model, that is instead of having you know, a hospital out there, the hospital's on the campus, okay? Or the law firm's on the campus, the engineering firm is on the campus. Automatically, you have a cheek by jowl experience, okay? So I'll give you an example internationally. Have a look at the University of Warwick, uh, W-A-R-W-I-C-K in the UK, and look at the, the fact that there's, I think, 350 Jaguar Rover uh, staff and designers and engineers physically on that campus. And all the electric vehicles now being released by those marks, are, have been designed at that campus, okay? That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So if you, <clears throat> it doesn't happen overnight, but the very fact that you have the intention means that you attract partners. It's all about partners and allies from the world of work in place on an academic institution's campus instead of just visiting them. It's not a day trip, mm. it's not a field trip, it's a daily thing, okay? So I think if you understand that model, that's what we're leaning towards. Okay, so it might be that that's why you would have a professional sporting team headquartered on a campus because all the training, all the coaching, all the physio, all the occupational therapy, all the nutrition and dietetics can revolve around a professional environment and then the students themselves are members of that team. Another example, okay? So just take that and say for each degree, each degree, anyone you can think of, sociology, you could do the same thing, okay? So you could have you know, an actual drop-in center that's related to sociological work, or it could be counseling, a counseling session or a section on the campus. It's that kind of thing. So just imagine, it's almost like a demonstrator model of the pedagogy, mm. yeah. And how does it relate to the block? Well, the block is, is a period in time. So you might have a focus on a particular issue for a particular block. So it might be the, the changing law that uh, applies to you know, property law change or something like that. And you'd have an example and perhaps a seminar, that kind of thing there. But look, this isn't gonna, all gonna happen at once. 
So that's why we have a three or five year plan. I don't over promise, it hasn't happened yet. Okay, this is the future. So, but you have okay. to have a, a design to get there. And it, you know, ask me again in a year or two and we'll be able to point to something that's happened. But now at this point, stage, it's a commitment that we're making and we're actually going out and getting partners. Yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, so changing, well, not changing tack at yep. all. Um, VU has a very strong track record in welcoming students from diverse backgrounds, mm -hmm. from all kind of levels. You know, it's, it's a very um, open um, approach. How are we going to continue that yeah. legacy, that, that accessibility, that, <coughs> that welcome? Well, it's part of the, um, the mix here, always has been. But let me say this, it's many of the best students are those who have chosen to come, yeah? And that doesn't mean they always choose first when they're young. Because as I said, remember we said earlier on about people maturing at different ages and stages? Mm. And I've looked at the stats, I'm on the board of a number of schools, right? And many, sadly, many students or adolescents are encountering mental health issues or just other health issues or confidence issues, they don't always graduate at the same rate or time or space. Okay, we know that. And yet, many of them are incredibly able. And you know, when the time is right, when they've gotten through and over that hump, they are then ready to study without a pressure cooker environment that, you know, doing it immediately, like you've just got to go right away. So there's that kind of question. There's also the question of being the readiness to do formation at any stage of career. So, you know, the place I worked at before, at Southern Cross, we had one of the oldest PhD graduates in the world who was in their 90s, right? And so I love that, you know? I think there's only one more now in Tokyo, which is beyond that now. Okay. And so my aim is to do all those things, you know? Like welcoming whatever stage, whatever time, when you're ready, be use the choice. Love it. I reckon that brings us to a really nice close, actually, because right? <laughs> you've, you've kind of just like issue the challenge, <laughs> um, we're the place. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh, if you're not, um, if you're not on board with, with that vision, I'm, I'm really not, no, I'm kidding. Um, but I guess, yeah. okay, so, so we're about to wrap up, but what, what's the most important takeaway, um, you know, that you'd like those watching this morning and, okay. and to, to, to leave with? Oh, look, there's, there's a number of things, but let me say this. I'd love to, we've heard some of your voices, right? We will only thrive if we hear your voices. Your voices, your students' voices, and listen to and adapt on that basis, yeah? It's not a plebiscite, but the greatest ideas come from outside, you know, from students, from others. And we, you know, the block itself was inspired by experiences in another country. It wasn't invented originally here. We adapted it. We did it, but it was a North American invention. So Australia is really great, and I think VU is really great at really listening carefully. And that's the thing. We want to listen to you. We want to react as a result of it, and we want to do it really superlatively well. So our ears are open to you. Thank you. Oh, amazing. Um, thank you, Adam. Um, I, I could keep going, but <laughs> I know we're not allowed. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys is a, and, and girls. And... Um, you know, we've got a huge team behind the scenes supporting supporting this and, um, you know, we're on a time schedule. Um, but any um, any further questions, any feedback, any comments, please, Adam's, you know, invited that in. I mentioned at the start, we're part of something continuous. We want to listen. We want to learn. We want to yep. remain nimble and adapt. Um, and it, as mentioned earlier, this is the first in a series of VU in Focus events. Um, the future students team will be in contact with the rest of the details on those. Mm. And yeah, thank you so much it's for, a pleasure for giving us your time. It's nice to meet everyone, even though I couldn't see you personally, but yeah. I felt you were there, you know. <laughs> thank well, you. they were here. We were getting yes, some questions, right. which is awesome. And it's keeping me on my toes going, oh, wow, this is a good one. That's great. Um, so yeah, you're there and we're here. So yeah, yeah. thank you Let's so much. Let's join it together in the future. Thank you. Thanks.